Okay, hi guys, welcome to Cardinal Science. This is your first video on the Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry 2017 specification. Now you'll probably be studying this at the beginning of year nine, or perhaps a bit later in year 10, or perhaps with some revision. So we'll start off with where we're gonna go with this video. Two specification points in mind here. Okay, the first one, 1.1. 1 .1. Understand the three states of matter in terms of arrangement, movement, and energy of the particles. And then for 1.2, we want to understand the interconversions between the three states of matter in terms of the names of the interconversions, how they're achieved, and the changes in arrangement, movement, and energy of particles when those changes are carried out. Okay, let's get going. So we'll start off with solid. Right, so the arrangement of the particles in the solid is as you can see here in the diagram. Okay, so the particles are very close together and they're packed in a regular pattern. Okay, they're not moving past each other, they stay in those positions. Going on to movement, now in those positions that you can see in the diagram, the particles are vibrating. So they're vibrating around fixed points there. And now the energy of the particles, these are all done in, in comparison to the other two types. Okay, so it has relatively low kinetic energy. So they're vibrating, but they're not vibrating very much. Compared to liquid and gas, it's got less kinetic energy. Now moving on to liquid, the particles are still very close, but there is no regular pattern. Okay, they can move past and around each other. And that brings us on to movement because the particles are now free to move. Okay, because they've got that little bit more kinetic energy, which of course fills in our final box there. They've got more kinetic energy than in the solid, but less than in gases. And then finally, gases, okay, the particles are very far apart. All right, and there are only very weak forces that attract them to each other. This means that they're free to move and they have high kinetic energy, more so than both liquids and solids. Okay, so for 1.2, we need to know the names of the conversions between the different states. So we'll start off as a solid over here and we'll convert our way around the diagram. So if a solid is converted into a liquid, so we're following this blue arrow, this blue arrow here, we call that melting. Now I've done that in red to indicate that it's been heated, okay? If we then move from a liquid over to a gas, we heat it again, and we call that evaporation. Okay, now if we go back the way we've come, so to go from gas to liquid, that's called condensation, and then from liquid into solid, that's freezing. Now, since we're back with solid, we'll go over the top with something called sublimation. Now sublimation, can only, only occurs in, in certain compounds and, and substances. Um, it's the, the conversion from a solid directly into a gas, never passing through the liquid phase. So iodine does this, for example, and there's some nice videos on YouTube that you can find that demonstrate this quite nicely. So we've gone from solid over to a gas and we've sublimed or rather sublimated. Okay, now from a gas, we can go directly to a solid in a process called deposition. These are our six names for the conversions between different states. We need to know what these are. Okay, so for the same specification point, 1.2, we need to know the names of the conversions, but also how they're achieved in terms of the kinetic energy, the forces of attraction, and the vibrations and movement of the particles. So we don't really need to worry about sublimation and deposition. That's beyond the scope of our study at this point. So we'll go through melting, evaporation, condensation, and freezing. Okay, so we'll start with melting. Melting's in red because it requires heat. So you heat a solid, okay, which increases the kinetic energy. So those particles start moving faster and faster. And as they vibrate faster, they eventually overcome the forces of attraction between them, which breaks the regular pattern that we saw in the structure of the solid. Now, moving on to evaporation. Okay, so we're again, we're still heating. We're heating the liquid, which again increases the kinetic energy and those particles begin to move further apart and they're now vibrating faster and faster. So much so that the force of attraction are broken completely and the particles can move far apart from each other in the gas phase. Now going back the way we just came, when we're going from gas to liquid it's called condensation. So we're cooling down the gas 
which decreases the kinetic energy and allows the forces of attraction to then take hold and pull the particles close together. This is what happens when hot gases inside your house contact the windows in your houses, which are cooler, and cause them to cool down and condense. Okay, now moving from liquid to solid, when we're all quite familiar with, I imagine, is freezing. So we're cooling the liquid, which decreases the kinetic energy further, so much so that the forces of attraction are able to hold those particles in a specific regular pattern, putting it in that same structure that I showed you in the previous diagram on the last slide. Okay, this is really important. There's a very common misconception here, and it took me a very long time to, to address this one myself, so we'll do this one now. Boiling and evaporation, they are not, I repeat, they are not the same thing. Now, there's a very easy way to understand this, Okay, you put your hand in boiling water, it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt a lot. You put your hand in evaporating water and it won't. Okay, the difference here is between the water that's boiling in your kettle and the water that is evaporating in a puddle outside your house on a sunny day. Okay, so boiling by definition is when all of the particles in a substance have enough kinetic energy to overcome the forces of attraction. Okay, so we're talking liquid to gas here, all right? So all of the particles have enough energy to become gas. In evaporation, it's a much, much slower process, okay? Some of the particles in a substance have enough kin kinetic energy to escape and overcome those forces of attraction, which is why a puddle takes a very long time to evaporate. Likewise, if you were to spill some water on the floor in your house and just leave it there, it would evaporate eventually. It's not boiling. It wouldn't scald you if you touched it. But there is a phase change, a state change. We're moving from liquid to gas much more slowly. OK, so how is this content examined? It's important that we know this because just having knowledge, knowledge itself is good, but to know exactly how they're going to ask us about this in our exam is even better. So looking at past papers from previous years, OK, we see that it's quite common that early on in the paper, you get a couple of one or two mark questions perhaps on this kind of thing or often embedded in a, in a more tricky question, okay? So you might be asked to label a diagram with the name of a conversion. For example, you might be asked to label what the name of the conversion is between that diagram on the left there, that's the solid, moving to the liquid, and you would write melting, and so on. They might give you a description, okay, of a, of a state change. For example, they might say, What's it, what, what, what would you name the state change um, when a liquid turns into a gas? They could even describe the movement, arrangement and position of the particles and how those might have changed and ask you to label that. OK, moving to the bottom now, these two describing bullet points. You would be asked to describe the movement, arrangement and position of particles for a given state. So you'd be using that table that I put in the previous slide and making sure you describe each one of those things. How they're moving, how are they arranged, what's their position like? OK. And then just slightly further than that, okay, perhaps now to a four mark question, we'd be describing the changes in movement, arrangement and position of particles for a given state change. So they would say um, ice melts when you heat it up. Explain how, or rather describe the changes in movement, arrangement and position of particles for that state change. 